Okay, let's talk about managing permissions in Exchange Online. Now, there are a couple of different places you're going to have to go to do this. Now, we're starting out here at the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I actually want to change that. You'll see a Admin Center here. I actually want to go down to Admin Centers here, and I need to go to the Exchange Admin Center. Now this is where we're going to be able to manage some of our permissions. Now when it comes up, it comes up by default to this, you see this default to the new Exchange Admin Center. Not everything is available in this new Exchange Admin Center yet. So for some things, we're still going to need to go over here back down to the classic Exchange Admin Center. But let's start with what we can do here. Alright, first thing is I want to show you is something in the mailboxes. So we're going to go to mailboxes. I'm going to open up my mailbox and right here under mailbox policies, click manage mailbox policies. And there's four of them here, a sharing policy, a role assignments policy, a retention policy, and an address book policy. We'll touch on these first two real quick. Uh, these are the sharing policy has to do with sharing information with people in or outside of your organization. Now you don't change the policy here. What you do is you change which policy is assigned. And by default, you're going to have a default sharing policy, a default role assignment policy, default MRM is uh, message retention. Uh, you're going to have a default message retention policy. So all of these policies created by default and they're assigned by default. Now if you want to change which policy is assigned you're going to click the edit here. Now this doesn't let you modify the policy it just lets you change which one is assigned. So if I wanted different role assignments and role assignments are going to be your user permissions. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to click my drop down and then choose my other assignment policy. Now I don't have another one yet because I haven't created one. I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. We also have a sharing policy, and again, you're going to see the same thing here, a default sharing policy. Now, we're not going to touch the MRM. We're going to deal with that in another video, but this is where you would go to change the MRM policy. All right, so let's start with user permissions here, and we'll look at sharing policies and the role assignment policy. So the sharing policies are going to be, once I get out of all of these windows, the sharing policies are going to be here in your Exchange Admin Center. And remember, we're in the new one, not in the classic one yet. So I want to go to Organization and Sharing. And this is going to be my sharing policy. And you'll see here, we're going to have to scroll down a little bit, under Individual Sharing, here's our default sharing policy. And that's the one that was assigned to our user automatically. Now to edit this policy, I can come up here to my little pencil and I can choose to edit my default sharing policy. Change the name and then here's the sharing policy. So with an anonymous domain, we're going to share calendar with free busy information plus the subject, location and title. Sharing with all domains, we're going to do cal calendar sharing with free and busy information only. Now you can edit these, double clicking on them and choose what you want. And most of this sharing, by the way, is going to be sharing calendar information. It's not about sharing other information. It's just sharing calendar information. So this is how you're going to edit that policy. Now, if you want more than one policy, let's say you have some people you want to be able to share more information than with others, you can come here and add an additional policy. And then where we were at before, you just select the policy that you wanted, and now that policy takes effect. Now, user rights work kind of the same way. We have to define a policy, we assign the rights assignment policy, and then those rights are now assigned to that user. However, that's not available in our uh, new Exchange Admin Center yet. So for that, we need to go back to the classic Exchange Admin Center. So I'll click on my classic Exchange Admin Center over here, and I will go to Permissions. And for permissions, we have admin roles, user roles, and then Outlook web, access, uh, web app policies. Now, the admin roles here can be managed in the new Exchange Admin Center. We're going to skip that. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. Let's go to user roles. And here in user roles, I have my uh, default role assignment policy. Now, just like with a sharing policy, I can create a new policy if I want right here. So I can set different policies for people with different... 
uh, different permissions, different roles. If I want to edit a policy, I'm going to click this little edit icon and that will allow me to modify my existing policy. So here you're going to see the policy name, the policy description, and then all of these are predefined policies here. And so what I do is I select the rights that I want to go with this policy. So my contact information, this role enables users to modify their contact information, including address and phone numbers. So if I want to uncheck that, then I can take those permissions away. If I check that, I give those permissions back. And then you can see I can also update, you know, here just sections of it. So as I go down through these policies or through these permissions, it's going to be a better word, I define the permissions that I want associated with that policy. And then back where I'm managing users, I go into the uh, policy assignments and I assign them the correct policy. And so you can kind of read through here and see everything that's allowed by default. Notice by default, my mailbox delegation um, isn't selected for anybody by default. But everybody else pretty much has most of these default permissions. So if you want to limit it, let's say you have some users you don't want to be able to have some of these permissions and you create a new policy, take away some of the permissions and then give them that particular policy. Alright, so that's how we're going to manage user roles in uh, Exchange. Now the other thing we have available is web app policies. Outlook web app policies. And you'll see here the Outlook web app or out OWA, read it correctly, OWA mailbox policy default. This is kind of the exact same thing. So I create the policy, I assign the permissions that I want to the policy, I assign the policy to the user. To edit the policy, I click here, same thing we did before. And then what features do we want available if people are using the Outlook web app? What file access do we want offline access? It's same thing, just check in and check the permissions we want, save the policy. Now, you might have noticed that the uh, OWA mailbox policy is not something that could be defined here in our standard Exchange Admin Center, or at least it's not assigned in the same place. So in your mailbox policies, you'll see that we actually don't have that. We don't have the Outlook policy. We do have another way to manage some of what they're allowed to do. Right here, we can manage email app settings. And this will let us turn on or off whether they can access Outlook on the web or not. But in order to actually set the policies for Outlook web access, if you're wanting to control some of that access. And then you need to do that back in the traditional Exchange Admin Center. Okay, now the last area that we want to look at is admin roles, and these can be managed here, but they can also be managed, I'm going to go ahead and close this, in our default Exchange Admin Center. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to roles, and you'll see admin roles are the only ones here. The others haven't been added in yet. Microsoft will probably get around to doing that before long. So I'm going to click on admin roles. And this is kind of similar. Microsoft uses a similar process for how they manage all of their permissions in Exchange. It's a little bit different, though, in that we have these policy or admin role groups and you'll see a bunch of them predefined here so let's just take a look compliance management this role group will allow a specified user responsible for compliance to properly configure and manage compliance settings within exchange in accordance with their policy okay if we click on that this will show us a little bit more about the um, policy group where we start manipulating the permissions is over here on the assigned tab. So these are role permissions assigned to this group. And then we can, let me back up. I'm looking at the wrong thing. All right, these are admins assigned to this role. There we go. That makes more sense.
So here's where I can add people to this group. So I can add and I can put in a name and now it's finally populating. So let me do a search for all right, so I can add myself, and I'm now a member of this group. Now, the permissions that are assigned to this group are here. Let me get the right tab this time on permissions. And kind of similar to what we had before, we have a bunch of predefined permissions here, and you'll notice some of them are checked and some of them are not. So for compliance management, if you had somebody do the compliance management role group, they're going to get these permissions. Audit logs, compliance admin, data loss prevention, information rights management, journaling, you get the idea. So it'll tell us the role, and this is kind of weird, right? Think role equals permissions. And then we put roles into role groups, and then we assign users to role groups. Now, if I want to see what these permissions actually entail, I'm going to come over to the little information, just hover over it, and that's going to pop up the tooltip, audit logs. This role enables administrators to manage the command let audit logging in an organization. Data loss prevention. This role enables administrators to manage data loss prevention settings inside the organization. All right, so you can see here, We've got a bunch of stuff predefined from Microsoft, which makes this really easy. If I have somebody I want to put in charge of compliance management or help desk or organization management, I want to add a couple of people to do recipient management, and all I have to do is add them to the role groups. Now, if I want to create an additional role group, then what I would do is I could copy the role group. Now, if I had this unchecked, I can add a role group, and that time it's not copying, it's just adding a brand new one for me. If I check it, then it allows me to copy that role group or to delete it. So if I want to create my own, I can either base it on an existing group or just add my own role group. And then when I add my role group, I give it a name, I give it a description. Let's actually look at it real quick here. Name, description, the right scope of default is fine. I'm going to call this temp. We're just going to skip the description for the moment and go next and then here's the list of all of the permissions and so I just come down and select the permissions that I want for this particular group next add my members and then review and finish and it will add the role group okay so Two different ways of managing permissions, one for admin roles, one for user rights assignments. Admin roles, we have admin roles that are in role groups, and we add people to role groups. For user rights, we set rights assignments policies, we add people to the assignment policies, and it gives them those rights. So a couple of different ways of approaching it, um, but there are some real strong similarities. So it should be pretty easy to move back and forth as you work with one particular type of permissions or the other.